Lulak is an act of love. Lulak is an act of love. When we were founded in 1929 to protect and defend our community, our founding fathers put their lives on the line to organize. They organized so that our community would not be beaten, accused of conspiracy for coming together, and lynched. Their valor, courage, and action are our legacy. LULAC is an act of love. I am surrounded by passionate and powerful civil rights leaders that have created change through their actions and will continue to create change because of our deep commitment to give back and transform our communities. Transformation, true transformation, happens when we unite because standing on the sidelines is not and will never be an option for a lulacker. We are powerful familia of volunteers, luchadores, and we do not give up. I want to be clear, there are many challenges ahead. When you have the leader of America undermining our democracy, calling our Mexican community rapists, pitting community, communities against each other, putting our children, our children, and parents in cages, the message is clear. War has been declared on an entire population. And know that although he may be targeting the most vulnerable within our community, our immigrant community, the larger message is that he is directly trying to dehumanize all of us sitting in this room. President Trump is attacking the very core of who we are, a nation of immigrants, a nation built on the sweat, tears, courage, and sacrifice of our parents and ancestors. We say, no mas. President Trump, no mas to holding our babies hostages and putting them in cages. President Trump, no mas to holding our dreamers hostages. We will not give up until every parent and child are reunited. We will not give up until our dreamers' dream is fulfilled. We will not give up on comprehensive immigration reform. We will not give up until Puerto Rico is treated fairly and our citizens, yes, American citizens, are not treated like second-class citizens of this country, their country. We will not give up until every child, regardless of the zip code that they live in, has a good education and that higher education is not a dream, but a reality to every student who wishes to pursue this path. We will not give up on ensuring that we have access to health care, access to basic civil rights and rights for the ones that we love. We will not give up until we take back our power, and we will do so by voting and running for office. Hear us clear, no nos rendiremos. We will never give up. My fellow Lulacers, mi familia, we have a lot of work ahead of us. I know the Lulac way, and our way is to take care of each other. Our way is to lead. Our way is to build lasting movements. Our way is to empower potential. Our best days are yet to be written. As I take on this role to serve as your CEO, your first Latina CEO, I ask you to join me. Lock arms with me. Cuando estamos unidos, 
somos mejores. Cuando estamos unidos, when we are united, nothing, nothing, nothing can stop us. Before I share my personal story, I want to thank all of our LULAC members, our youth and young adults. We are stronger together. Remember that what makes LULAC so very powerful is you. LULAC's power lies in its members across 35 states, D.C., and Puerto Rico, and the community that you live in. I want to thank our LULAC leadership I want to thank our national presidents for their commitment to our organization. President Robles, President Rosales, and President Moran, thank you for your guidance, support, and caring words. Thank you because you are our bold Latina pioneers. President Moran, President Flores, and President Dovalina, Thank you for your service in making sure that LULAC was on the front lines fighting every single time. To our LULAC board, gracias. Thank you for your sacrifices, for your words and actions to ignite change. I also want to thank Brent Wilkes, who took me under his wing, and he is a pioneer in his own right. Gracias, Brent. I want to thank our staff, interns, and volunteers who make everything possible. To the National CEO Search Committee, President Rocha, Alicia, Michael, Lourdes, and Salas, thank you for selecting me as the best candidate to serve my beloved community in this role. Please know that I will lead boldly. Know that I will lead with courage and then my heart has to tremble just enough to remind me to push beyond my limits. Please know that my actions, my actions are the evidence of my faith. I want to end with my personal story, and I do this because who we are matters. Over 30 years ago, my mother, Norma Dolores Benavides, took the incredible risk to leave her home, Honduras, behind. Her sacrifice was leaving her nursing profession, family, language, food, and way of life. She took the incredible risk so that her two-year-old son and her one-year-old daughter, me, could fulfill her dream, the dream that many parents dream of having children who hold values and contribute back to society. In my journey in the U.S., I have picked up cans in the streets of South Central L.A., I have cleaned houses and offices, I have survived sexual assault. I am here today, first and foremost, because of my higher being. Like many of you, I am here because of my loving parents who gave up their own dreams and became pioneers and heroes in my eyes for sacrificing their own lives so that all four of their children could be college educated and have an opportunity to dream. I leave the stage grateful and as a grounded optimist, grateful for individuals who through their actions ignited the fire in my heart to serve. I am here because of Lenny Gonzalez, who asked me to join Lula Council 4609 over 12 years ago. I am here because of people like Senator Tim Kaine, who took a chance on a 23-year-old to serve in his cabinet. I am here because of my NHLI hermanas, Belen, Rafaela, Inez, who remind me that I am a guerrera and that I should not let my life shine less because it may cause insecurities in others. I am here because of my husband, Carlos, who has my back. 
I am here because of Debbie Aguiar Vélez and Debbie Diener, who taught me how to negotiate and expand my mindset. I am here because of Ms. Frankie Hughes, who first met me cleaning offices and would pour love, knowledge, and grace on me at the tender age of 12. Ms. Frankie, you are and always will be our guardian angel. I stand on this podium today because you believed in me. I will leave you with excerpts from one of my favorite poets, Langston Hughes. I had the privilege of attending a historical black college, Virginia State University, which allowed me to raise my awareness around civil rights and the issues that our African-American community confronted in this country. We know that joining together in coordination, creating alliances, and establishing solidarity matters. The poem is called Let America Be America Again. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great, strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme that any man be crushed by one above. It never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wealth, but opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air that we breathe. Oh, let America be America again, that land that never has been yet, and yet must be the land where every man is free, the land that's mine, the poor men's, Indians, Negroes, me, who made America, whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain, must bring back our mighty dream again. Sure, call me any ugly name you choose. The seal of freedom does not stain. From those who live like leeches on the people's lives, we must take back again our land, America. Thank you. Thank you.